Hello everyone, I'm Josh from the Redwood Core team and I wanted to do a very quick demo of our two new experimental features which are OpenTelemetry support and the Redwood Studio. So if we have a quick look at this example project I have in front of me, we'll find that it is a very basic blog post site. So if we refresh, just to make sure we're getting the latest one, yep. So we have a three posts on our homepage, we can view each post, there's an about page, contact us form, an admin crud view, and we have a DB auth set up here, so we have auth. So let's have a look now at the two experimental features. So we have Yarn Redwood Experimental, which you can shorten to EXP for convenience, set up open telemetry. So this will do a number of steps, but the first one is just to confirm that you understand it's still experimental. And I'll talk through the changes whilst it continues here. So inside the tool, we'll see that there's now an experimental.openTelemetry block. It simply contains a toggle to turn it on and off at your convenience, and an API SDK uh, file location. So this is also a generated file for you, which contains the boilerplate code necessary to set up OpenTelemetry um, during your development, so during your Redwood dev. It has a number of things in here which you can find more information on um, from the Open Telemetry docs online. But one of the most important things to note is that we're exporting all of our telemetry data to localhost v1 slash traces, um, which happens to be also where the studio is listening, so that will be convenient later. And you'll also see that by default we instrument um, HTTP requests, Fastify, Prisma, and we also do a GraphQL. A, from a plugin we register internally as well. So our setup command is finished, and we'll see a link to our a form page, which is where we'd love to he hear your feedback and any bug requests or feature uh, requests as well. So if we spin back up the dev server, we will hopefully see that there's been absolutely no change because all we have done is instrument our code, which should not have any user facing changes. And indeed it hasn't. Apart from the fact now that we see in our terminal, we have a load of errors, because there's no, no one listening at 4318 to collect all this tracing data. So this is where the studio comes in. Yarn, Redwood, Experimental, Studio. Now this will automatically open up on localhost 4318. So if we go there, we'll see this new web interface, which is the Redwood Studio. Now it's primarily designed to give you insights into your Redwood project. So what it'll do is it'll listen for all the open telemetry tracing that's coming from your project. So if we do some refreshing here, generate some more test data, we'll see that we no longer have all these errors in our console because the telemetry is being ingested into the, sorry, into the studio. And we can see that, for example, we have 14 traces now covered. So if we have a look through those, as a tracing view, it lists all of the traces that have come in. And we can see when they come in, how long they take, and some little features as to what was going on inside them. So this is the timeline view, where we see a rough breakdown of all of the spans that happened within the trace. So there was a HTTP a post that involved a Lambda request handler, and then we have one big a uh, blog post query, which is a, a GraphQL operation. So it has a operation name, it has um, a result here, it has any variables, and it has the document that was executed. So we can see each of the individual resolvers uh, or fields being resolved. So there's post, post, post for three posts. And if we continue down, we can see all of the fields the GraphQL is trying to resolve, including relationships. So we're also looking for the authors here as well. Now we have Prisma instrumented by default as well. So we can see here that we're making SQL statements. So we're selecting uh, posts here, for example, and then we're selecting authors um, here from our user. 
So this is a way to go through and see what is happening um, during your, your, your quest. But we also, by default, automatically wrap all of your API code. So we can see here, for example, post.js and post services. So if we have a look there, API SRC services post post. This function is being automatically in the background wrapped within an open telemetry span, which is enabled, which is enabling us to see uh, our timings here and any results as a consequence. So we can see that we executed this DB statement as a consequence of calling our posts. So that's the timeline view. We also have a claim table view, which shows us all of the spans that are being executed, how many, and some timings and some statistics around it. So for example, P90 and P95s. There's also a Prisma queries view, which simply shows a a table of all the Prisma queries that were executed, and I'll leave you to, to examine that further yourself. Now we also have the SQL statements tab, which simply shows a long list of all of the SQL statements that are being executed by your by your app, the SQL statement themselves, any insights, the duration, when it happened, and any the trace that it's linked to. So you can click here and go back to the trace it came from. So that's the studio's tracing. We also have the feature of GraphQL uh, in the playground. So this has been implemented inside the studio. And we can see that if we go here, we can say, okay, I would like all of the posts with the ID, the title, and the created app. You can run that here, and we get the results. Now, this was possible as well um, in previous versions of Redwood, but what was difficult in this case is um, user impersonation. So if we go, for example, and instead want to look at um, uh, yes, contacts, and we'll look at ID, message, and name. We'll run it. We don't have permission to do this because we're not currently authenticated. So this is where the auth impersonation comes in. Now the user impersonation is c is controlled via the toml. So we have some documentation on some new toml uh, config. So we can see here, if I copy it from the from the documentation, we have experimental.studio.graphql auth impersonation. So the test project I'm using uses dbauth and I wish to impersonate a um, user with user ID 1. So I'll save that. I'll go back to my project. I'm going to refresh this page and what you'll see down here now is we've automatically set the headers necessary. So we said we're using auth dbauth, um, association beta 1 and we've set a cookie um, that will impersonate your user. And if we run this query, which we were previously not allowed to do because we weren't authenticated, we'll see that we do get data back. Unfortunately, there's no data being returned because it doesn't exist, but we can, can now can successfully execute the query. We can also execute mutations. So let's have a look at... Oh. Let's add a mutation. Let's do a create contact email testing, message testing, and name testing name. And to give me back the ID. So let's execute this. You can see this now. And if we go ahead and execute the, uh, the query again, now we'll see, oh, we're not authenticated. Sorry, well, we need to refresh, sorry. Um, once we have this this token, we need to make sure we have the header set, sorry. Then we'll see that we do get the data back. So it's possible now to, to impersonate users very easily just by changing um, values in your TOML and not by manipulating the headers um, in, a, in a tedious way. So those are our two current experimental features, OpenTelemetry and Studio. Now, Studio relies on OpenTelemetry for um, all of the tracing and the insights it gets from that, but you can still use the auth impersonation without it. So the final thing I just wanted to say is that if we go to the form um, 
the JS forms. We have an experimental features category, which lists uh, the open cloud JS support and Redwood Studio as experimental features here, along with some other interesting experiments that are running in the background. Um, and this is where we'd love to see your your. Or this is where the docs live. Sorry, first of all, for all these experimental features, and we also ha would love to see your comments. So any feedback, any bug reports, any feature requests, things like that would be very useful, and we'd love it. Thank you very much for your time.